Take the shirt off, Mike. What? No. Hi. I suppose you're all wondering why we called you here today. Okay. Welcome to a new series here at OK Thank You called Devil's Advocate, titled by Robin. <laughs> it's been said that a hero is only as good as his villains. Where would Batman be without his rogues gallery? Part of what makes him such a great hero figure is that he has an amazing group of diverse villains to fight against. But you don't really like Batman. No! Every story needs a bad guy. If you didn't have someone to root against, you wouldn't care so much about your hero. History is always written by the victor, but if you were to consider a villain's motivations, you might find some justification in what they do. In this new series, we're gonna play Devil's Advocate, roll credits, on behalf oh. of those who are hated in their part in some of your favorite stories. For our first episode, I give you Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Why, thank you. Keep in mind, just because we present a different view of the story, that doesn't mean we actually think that way. That's what it means to play devil's advocate. Thank you. You're welcome. You just have to reconsider your personal beliefs and view a situation through your opponent's eyes. This leads to a better understanding of the situation and challenges your own point of view, which is always a good thing. John Truby touches on this in Anatomy of a Story. Oh. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Dumbo. Gaston oh. is in fact arrogant and rude Bordering on misogynistic. Great, I can say misogynistic, but I have trouble with advocate. Let's see you eat that many eggs. He has an eye for Belle and tries to woo her in a dumb jock sort of way. He is a walking case study in toxic masculinity. It's obvious and well understood by what we know of Belle's character that she wouldn't be attracted to a guy like that. But consider for a moment the society in which these characters live. We live in a society. Oh, I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> the story takes place in the 1760s, so at that time, toxic masculinity wasn't a thing. And we're not looking at how Gaston should act based on 2020's idea of what makes a man toxic. That wouldn't be fair to Gaston. As long as we're being fair to him. <laughs> He's simply striving to be the pinnacle idea of what a man should be in the time that he was raised. He's a master hunter. He's a strong provider, and he's made himself the desire of most women and the envy of most men. In his world, he's a pretty successful guy. Can you really blame him or call him evil for simply living up to the standard society has placed upon him? I would suggest that you cannot. Also, let's be honest here, Gaston could basically have any woman he wants. The ladies of this town and have thrown- What? And LeFou. And LeFou. The ladies of this town have thrown themselves at him. Does he just go for the sure things that require nothing of him? No, Nay. he does not. He pushes them aside and instead desires a relationship with a woman of substance. And books. Of, of course, part of this comes from his fixation on a girl he can't have, but that just means he wants a woman that challenges him. If you think about it, this is a pretty desirable trait in a guy. I also prefer my men to eat four dozen eggs when they're children. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, Never but will. when they get reach adulthood, five dozen five or dozen. walk. Out. Out. If your egg count didn't go up, out of here. We will concede that Gaston wants Belle to fit into the traditional, stereotypical female role of a mid-1700s woman. That is an old woman. But what man at that time wouldn't? He doesn't treat Belle with the respect that she deserves before she's kidnapped. Yes, kidnapped by Beast. That's true. But he probably doesn't have a frame of reference on how to treat a woman that way. Right or wrong, it was accepted and expected that women would want to be married and have a family. It's fine to say that their society was backwards and unfair to women because it was, but it's not okay to blame a guy who doesn't know better for meeting societal expectations placed on him. The comment section of this video is gonna be incredible. Uh, we already said we're not sticking up for him. We're playing Devil's, Devil's Advocate. Advocate. Ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum. Devils! Oh. Okay. Back to business. He's especially good at expectorating. Tui! Tui! Nine, nine points, points for Gaston. <gasps> I give him nine. 
It's also obvious by today's standards that when Gaston goes to Belle's home to propose, he is being far too pushy. What? But, but, as we established, Gaston is a product of his time and society. In the 1700s, women were traded off by their fathers for business or financial purposes. Oh boy. Belle and her father were quite poor, and they didn't ha really have anything to offer Gaston for the pairing. And yet, he showed up with an elaborate proposal and wedding celebration ready to go. In his own brutish way, he was actually trying to be sweet. And if your argument against the way Gaston treats Belle is that he's dismissive of her needs and treats her poorly because he's essentially a douche bro. Well, I'm gonna use that term more often. It's actually from the 1700s. Is it? Little known fact. Wait, no, it's not. Let's talk about the way Beast treats her. Uh-oh. <laughs> Beast takes her father Maurice prisoner because he is simply lost in the woods. He's lost in the woods and searching for shelter so he doesn't die. When Belle searches for her father and comes upon him in a dungeon. That's Beast important, a dungeon. <laughs> Beast offers to replace the old guy for the hot girl. Then oh. he throws her father out of the castle and back into the elements. Gaston may have thought Maurice was just an addle-brained old man, but the worst he did was laugh at him a bit. So Maurice heads back out to rescue Belle. In the meantime, Beast gives Belle a few small conveniences, like a bed, dinner, and clothing, which by the way, the dinner came to life, so... I'm giving him extra points for that, whatever. Did he give her the dinner? The no, dinner the, you're right, the dinner, the dinner gave themselves up to Belle. <laughs> um, Belle came down with- Eggs. Long story short, Belle comes down with an acute case of Stockholm Syndrome. Over the course of her captivity, you know, because she was kidnapped and held prisoner. <sighs> That's captivity. Be softened towards her, sure. But who's to say that if she had shown the same kind, stern independence and understanding she directs Beast, Gaston would have turned softer and turned him <laughs> <laughs> That was so dope. <sighs> Gaston's <What>? never soft. <laughs> <sighs> He's always hard. <laughs> also, you read that wrong. I realized that. <laughs> It's been a long day. That's fine. It's always a long day here at OK, thank Especially you. Especially with Gaston. Being hard. Yeah. But who's to say that if shown the same kind of stern independence and understanding she directs at Beast, Gaston wouldn't have softened and turned himself around much the same as Beast did. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh-oh. You have to remember that Gaston is simply doing what is in his nature to do because of the era and society he lived in. Just because someone is boorish and ignorant, it doesn't make that person evil. Beast, on the other hand, is completely at fault for the situation he's in. He was rude and abusive to a poor beggar woman. Beast wasn't kind to her or unfairly judged. He was mean and dismissive to someone in need, and that's why his household suffered. Did Beast learn his lesson immediately? Yes. No, um... he did not. He wrecked parts of the castle, continued to be abusive to the staff that had been cursed because of him, <laughs> and never tried to change his circumstance. He'd fit in in 2020. This begs the question, why isn't Beast the bad guy here? Why isn't the guy who actually imprisoned two, not one, two innocent people that and immorally, of. and that we know there of, could and be immorally more. and illegally? held a young girl against her will, considered the villain. While it is true that Gaston tried to coerce Belle into marriage by threatening to have her father instituted in the asylum. That is bad. <laughs> Pro tip, don't do that. He really believed that Maurice was mentally ill. He believed Belle had been brainwashed into siding with her abuser, which is a legitimate concern based on the facts as he saw them, and he was attempting to help her. And I'm not saying that he was completely unselfish and honorable in this action, but I would hardly call him an evil villain. Misguided, yes, but hardly evil. When Belle returns after being let go by the beast, after promising to return to her imprisonment, what the hell? Gaston only knows that she's been held captive by a vicious creature who has terrorized two of his fellow villagers. 
As a hunter and natural protector, it is in Gaston's nature to seek out this violent abomination and slay it in order to protect his community. Wouldn't this be the logical response to a threat, even in today's society in which we live in? Gaston goes out into the wild to face what he believes to be an evil menace on his own ground in order to protect the village and the woman he loves. Or is infatuated with. <laughs> Now, it's true that if Gaston kills the beast before he loves and is loved in return, all of the people that have been cursed will remain that way forever. And that would be quite the tragedy. But is it Gaston's fault that they're in that situation? Gaston doesn't even know about the curse they suffer under. Beast is the one who caused it. Gaston goes to a castle to kill a monster and finds magical household items running amok attacking people. <laughs> How would you react? I'm betting most people in the same situation would react just as Gaston did. Kill the candle! And after all this, what does Gaston get for his trouble? He gets tossed off a turret into a deep ravine and is killed. You can tell because of the skull marks in his eyes. And if it were 2020, he'd love that. He sure would. Then the girl he was trying to defend and save rushes to the guy who killed him. He doesn't know that though. That just doesn't seem fair, does it? Look, we're not saying Gaston was a great guy. He absolutely had his flaws, none of which are sung about in the Gaston song. But did he deserve to die simply for trying to do what he believed was honorable and right? I submit that he did not. Sometimes you need to look at a story from both perspectives. Sometimes we need to understand where the opposing viewpoint comes from. What is the reason characters take the actions they do? So, there it is. In the case of Gaston, the defense rests. It's up to you to decide if he is truly a villain or just a misunderstood, rash individual. But Gaston is far from the only villain who should be viewed through a new lens. We have plenty more in store for you on future episodes of The Devil's Advocate. Maybe Belle should have just remained single for a while. Maybe she should date herself, okay? But you might find that you like her, Belle. Just learn to love yourself. She loves books. She does love books. It's true. Just curl up with a good book and yourself. But you know who the real hero of Beauty and the Beast is, right? The candle, kill it. It's LeFou. You need to watch the Beauty and the Beast sing along the new one at Epcot. Uh, it spins the entire story on its head and says LeFou is the reason for everything and he's the true hero. I like him gay. It's <laughs> out of context. Josh Gad. So anyway, uh, let us know what you think in the comments below and uh, continue to follow all of our social media endeavors. All those links are in the description below and we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you.